Hello everyone. First of all, I want to give a shout out to Philip Zivan Susols for becoming a member. Thank you, Philip. In this video, we'll be solving a radical equation. If you like the video, please comment, like and subscribe and hit the bell button for notifications. And let's get started. So we do have this radical equation. 1 over x plus 1 over square root of 13 minus x squared equals 5 over 6. And we're going to be solving for values of x. Now, when you see a problem like this, some of you are probably thinking to use a trigonometric substitution. Did I read your mind? Okay, something like this. You know, we had similar problems before and we used effectively the trigonometric substitution. So what does that look like? Well, you can use sine or cosine, doesn't really matter here. So I can basically say that, okay, let x be equal to the square root of 13 times sine alpha. Okay, so of course we gotta make sure that uh, this is valid because obviously sine alpha needs to be between negative one and one, but that works because we do have the domain of this function uh, requiring that 13 minus x squared is you know, greater than zero, so that will actually work. So if you go ahead and substitute, what happens? You're going to get some expression, you can go trigonometric, but that's not what we're gonna do. Okay, you could definitely do, do this approach and see where it leads you, but I'll, I'd like to show you something different, okay? And what does that look like? I mean, if we're gonna manipulate this equation. It's not super crazy, and a lot of times it's expected, but when we have a radical expression as part of something bigger, we usually try to isolate that radical and square it, right? Because our goal is basically to get rid of the radical. And you can do the same thing here. So what you can do is, you know, this is kind of like one approach. You can isolate the radical, right? And then it's gonna look like this. You can make a common denominator if you want, no big deal. And then square both sides. Obviously when you square both sides, you're gonna get rid of all the radicals. You're gonna get some interesting equations, so on and so forth. And definitely you can proceed that way too. But again, I'll show you something different. And that method, is, I mean, not that obvious, but it's something that is expected. Okay, here's what we're gonna do. Without further ado, we're going to go ahead and square both sides. Okay, is that a surprise? Okay, what happens if you square both sides? Well, we're just gonna square the sum. It's like a plus b quantity squared, right? And is equal to a squared plus b squared. I'd like to write those first and then plus 2ab, and that's going to look like 2 over x times the square root of 13 minus x squared. Beautiful. On the right-hand side, we have 25 over 36. Now, at this point, you might be thinking, what are we going to do with this? Um, are we going to make a common denominator? Well, if you do, it's definitely going to get messier, and you don't want that. So you want to keep it nicer. How do you do that? Well, we'll make a common denominator, but only partially. So we're gonna go ahead and combine these two guys here. Why? Because you'll see. Okay, is that a good answer? So yeah, we'll do that right now. So if you make a common denominator, you're gonna get 13 minus x squared plus x squared, because you have to multiply by x squared, divided by x squared times 13 minus x squared. Again, we're partially doing it, not completely, because it's going to be real messy if we do that. Okay. And then we get our radical here. We still have a radical, but that's okay. We'll handle that. Okay. You know, when you have a radical, you don't always have to square it. There are other ways to do it, especially something like this one. Okay. Now, what is next? Well, here's the good part. Negative x squared and positive x squared cancel out. So we end up with x squared times this. And notice the denominators. Again, we're not trying to make a common denominator, but notice one thing here. One of the denominators is the other one squared. What is that supposed to mean? Wow, it means we can use substitution. Beautiful. How are we gonna use that? Well, I'm gonna call this one over x times the square root of 13 minus x squared. I'm gonna call that something, let's call that u. And then from here we get 13 u squared, don't we? Okay, so this implies 13 u squared plus two u, okay, we gotta say that again, right? Birthday song equals 25 over 36. And obviously you can just multiply both sides by 36 or put everything on the same set. Okay, we don't always have to do it because sometimes it's better to leave it as a fraction. And 
you know, because when we write the quadratic formula, b squared minus 4ac, uh, it's better to have some fractions because they usually cancel out. So, and if you do make a common denominator or multiply both sides by 36, you're going to get very large numbers that might be a little hard to deal with. Anyways, so this is our quadratic, and if we can solve for u, hopefully from there we can solve for x. But I'm going to save you the trouble, and this can be done, it's not super hard, you know, but I'll save you the trouble and give you the values of u here, okay? So, one of the u values from this quadratic equation is going to be 1 sixth, and this, which means that th this equation is actually factorable, and the other u value is going to be negative 25 over 78. Okay, they're not very expected, but basically that's what it is if you solve it. So, these are rational roots, good. Okay, we got the u values. Now, how do we go from the u values to the x values? Simple. We're just going to back substitute, right? We're just going to go ahead and replace u with 1, 6, for example. So, if I do this, x times the square root of 13 minus x squared is equal to 1 over 6. Obviously, in this case, you can just go ahead and cross multiply. Let's go ahead and do one of them and the other one again, I'll give you the answer, okay? So we get x times the square root of 13 minus x squared is equal to 6. If you square both sides, you're going to get x squared times 13 minus x squared is equal to 36. Now, even though uh, u comes from a quadratic equation, x is not going to come from a quadratic equation. Well, sort of, it is. Okay, how does that work? If you distribute, you get 13x squared minus x to the fourth power is equal to 36. Obviously, when you put everything on the positive side, which is the right-hand side, we get something like this, right? And here, we do get some good solutions. How do we get some good solutions? Well, first of all, notice that this doesn't have any x cubed or x in it, so it can be easily factored. And so our idea is to find two numbers whose product is 36 and whose sum is negative 13, right? You know how to factor trinomials, and this is a trinomial. So those numbers are negative 9 and negative 4, which means that this expression can actually be factored into x squared minus 9 and x squared minus 4, which is pretty, right? Okay, now from here, as you know, we're going to set each factor equal to 0, and we'll be getting two solutions from each one. So we get x equals 3, x equals negative 3, we get x equals positive 2, and we get x equals negative 2. Okay, here's the thing. When you solve these values, not all of them are going to work nicely, okay? Because when you go ahead and back substitute, obviously you have a radical like this one that is always non-negative, and it's multiplied by x, and it's also non-negative, which means x cannot be negative. So we're basically going to discard neg the negative values because they're just not going to work. So x equals 3 and x equals 2 are good values. But that's not the end of the story because we do have another equation or another u value that we need to work out, right? Okay, so what are we going to do next? We're going to go ahead and set this 1 over x thing to that value. So it's going to look like this. 1 over x times the square root of 13 minus x squared is equal to negative 25 over 78. And then cross multiply, square both sides, you'll get a quartic, but it's actually can be turned into a quadratic because it's called biquadratic, maybe something like that. Okay, so it's kind of like x squared squared. And then whichever solutions are valid. And again, I'm going to save you the trouble because this is kind of time consuming and you don't really need to worry about that. If you want, you can definitely go ahead and do it in your own time. But the x values that come from here are going to look like negative square root of 481 plus minus 13 divided by 10. Okay, so we're going to have four x values which is kind of expected because we're getting a quartic equation and those are the solutions. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know, comment, like, and subscribe. And I'll see you in another video, same time tomorrow. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.